And it's the first presentation in the book of Acts of the 22. And the time has come after being called uh, to be fishermen for eternal souls, after been giving an on-site hands-on training for three plus years, after being tutored privately, commissioned publicly, filled with the Holy Spirit of God, Peter steps up to the microphone. And he delivers publicly the first sermon. I'm sure his pulse was throbbing in anticipation. His heart was pounding with excitement, to say the least. He was going to communicate what he'd been taught, what he'd been shown, what he'd been commanded to say. So this is significant. This is the first gospel presentation. It starts in verse 21. And here Peter preaches the first sermon after Christ's death, burial, and resurrection and sending of the Holy Spirit down. And what does he say? Well, in verse 21, it's a verse we all know from soul winning. It's actually a quote from Joel chapter 2 and verse 32. In fact, if you look at the Romans road, you know, the one I use and that I just shared Wednesday night as one of the parts of our discipleship and counseling class and what next week I'm going to be using to train how to do lesson one, which is salvation. Did you know that the Romans road, Paul's presentation of the gospel in Romans, almost every part of it is drawn from the Old Testament. Paul uses Old Testament verses like the verse 21 you see before you to give the New Testament message of salvation. And and sometimes we forget that. You can share the gospel as clearly from the Old Testament as you can from the New because that's how Paul did it. Paul used the Old Testament and he says in verse 21, and it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now zip down to verse 37 and 38. And when they heard this, they were cut to the heart. By Peter? Peter cut them to the heart? Peter can reach in and cut people to the heart? No. See, in the very first presentation of the gospel, you see the element that most of us need constant reminding about. Salvation is of the Lord, Jonah 2.9. Salvation is a supernatural miracle. Salvation is not something you go off to school and learn how to be a glib, quick, beat everybody faster than they can, give them more answers than they could possibly overwhelm, and overcome all their obstacles and give them the gospel. No. It's a supernatural event where simple, weak, helpless people share a message from God And look what happens in verse 37. They were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, I'm reading verse 37, what shall we do? I mean, they they were dealt with by God. If a person is not dealt with by God, we don't need to keep trying to twist their arm, you know, into come on. Wouldn't you like to just try this today? Just come on. Won't you? Come on. No, if they're not, if God is not working in their heart, they can't be saved no matter what they do with us. See, that's, the, that's why looking at these is so vital for us to understand salvation. There is a work of God on the inside when people get saved. It's not merely an emotional outer, you know, response. There is an internal miraculous stirring of the Spirit of God inside of people's hearts and and we see it now look at verse 38 and peter said to them now if there's a first step if there's a first key element this is the first time in response to someone wanting to be saved in the new testament church the very first presentation now he quoted that whoever calls in the name of the lord shall be saved But when they said, what shall we do? What is the human response to the work of God? It's right there in verse 38. Then Peter said to them, repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Wow. Now look down at verse 41. And those who gladly received his word were baptized And that day about 3,000 were added to the church. Wow, what shall we do? Repent is what he said. So, what would the summary be of the gospel presentation? Number one, one word. Peter said it. It's the first word he said. Repent. Change your mind about 
God, about who is the God of your life. Is it the God of this world, the God that you were born into his family, or are you going to renounce that God and change your mind about who the God is that you are going to serve, and it's the true and living God, creator of heaven and earth, who died in your place on the cross. Repent, change your mind, which leads to a change of behavior.